All right, so uh, welcome everyone to the Schubert seminar. Uh, before we, uh, we start today's seminar, let me remind you about a couple of announcements. Um, the last seminar, Anders announced that uh, we are looking for um, uh, nominations for either graduate students or for postdocs who are interested uh, to, to give uh, short talks. The short talks will happen probably at the end of November, beginning of December. And especially the early career people that are on the job market uh, are encouraged to um, to nominate, to be nominated. They can self-nominate somebody else. A uh, third party can nominate them and so on. So please, if you if you know anyone and that person is interested in giving a talk, um, uh, please send an email to any any of us. Um, and um, the next seminar is going to be next Monday at the same time with uh, Dave Anderson. And now uh, let's start uh, today's seminar. So Chang Long Zong um, from uh, State University of New York in Albany is going to tell us about the elliptic periodic module and the 3D mirror symmetry. So please take it away, Chang Long. Yeah, thank you. Now, first, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. Yeah, so um, this is uh, some talk. It's a talk about my recent work with Christian Leonard and the Gu Fan Zhao. So um, yeah, here's the rough plan. So I will talk about first mention some background about e equivalent elliptic cohomology, and then I will say something about elliptic cohomology, equivalent elliptic cohomology of X of a variety, and uh, then I will recall the construction of K theory periodic module. After that, I will talk about the elliptic version. And uh, then I will talk about the, the modulistic operators in elliptic case, and then the main result. So first, some background about elliptic cohomology. So the first part is about, I mean, there are many motivations, many reasons of considering elliptic equivalent elliptic cohomology. The first one comes from, uh, for me, actually. The first one comes from the correspondences between three different objects. So the three big circles. Okay, the first one is about R matrices. So basically they are talking about solutions of classical yang baxter equations. So there are three types of solutions. One is called rational, the other one trigonometric, and the last one are called elliptic functions. <clears throat> so there are solutions of yang baxter equations and uh, they can be used to construct different types of uh, quantum algebras. The first type is called Youngian. The second one is called quantized universal invariant algebra, and the last one is called quantum elliptic uh, quantum elliptic algebra. So bas basically, they are algebras defined by using the generating relations using R matrices. That's my understanding of this. <clears throat> and the uh, the second category of objects consists of uh, contains the one dimensional commutative formal group formal groups. Okay, there are three types. They come from, I mean, the ones that come from algebraic groups. There are three types. One is the additive formal group. Second one is the multiplicative formal group. And the last one is the collection or the elliptic formal groups. So that's the second collection of objects. And the last one is the generalized cohomology series having 10 classes. So there are three types. The first one is equivalent cohomology. The second one is equivalent K-theory, and the last one will be the equivalent elliptic homology, okay? So, and all the three collections, they correspond to each other. So for instance, equivalent cohomology, they give you the uh, additive formal groups, and uh, they give the rational R matrices, which gives the young game. Similarly, for K-theory, you have the formal group will be the multiplicative formal groups, and then they will give you the universal invariant algebra, the quantized version. So for, and then also this quantum elliptic algebra, they corresponds to the elliptic formal groups, and uh, they are supposed to correspond to equivalent elliptic homology. Okay, so that's that's the relation between the three categories or three collection of objects. So that's the one the one of the motivations of considering this equivalent elliptic homology. So this is a theory. So the axioms are give, were given by Ginsburg, Kaplanov, and Wasserrod. They give some a list of axioms, and uh, that's in 1906, I think. That's an archive paper, never published. And the, but the first construction was given by Gronowski. Okay. 
basically the two work appear in the same time, almost in the middle of nineties. And later on, Ruri and many others have studied such theory. Ruri give a general construction of equivalent elliptic cohomology and using this derived algebraic junction. So, and there are a lot of more people involved, so I couldn't give a complete list, okay? So that's the first reason of considering this equivalent elliptic cohomology. So the, sec uh, the second part comes from this uh, so-called 3D mirror symmetry. So this that's some mirror um, theory from physics, theoretic physics, and uh, the mathematical statements is made uh, more concrete or precise and rigorous by recent work of many people, Aganajik, Okonkov, Rimani, uh, Smirnov, Vachenko, and so, and there are many more others, mostly from uh, Okonkov school. So the statement is, so it's more like a correspondence, conjectural correspondence between uh, different objects. So basically here, X is a symplectic variety, symplectic resolution. And then it said there's a mirror of this variety. We call it X shriek that becomes a standard notation. And then there's some uh, correspondence between the two sides. The first one is that, so both of them will have torus action. So you have a torus acting on X, you have a, another torus acting on X shriek. And uh, so then they satisfy this property. That is, so if you look at this diagram, so you have considered X cross X shriek. And uh, now if you consider W from the T fix, one of the T fixed points of X in X and the W shriek, a T fixed point, a T shriek fixed point. Then one can consider like this embedding and also the other embedding. Then what the uh, 3D mirror symmetry statement says is the following. So there's some line bundle over this. So this equivalent elliptic homology of X cross X shriek, you can think of this as a variety, okay? So over this variety, you have a line bundle. Then you can consider some section. There exists some section M, so that if you pull it back, you get a section over this variety, equivalent cohomology, elliptic cohomology of X. You can also pull back to here, to the X shriek side. You also get a, uh, a rational section. And then the statement says that, first of all, the T fixed points of the two sides should be bijective to each other. So it will map W to top shriek. That's how you identify the bijection between the three fixed points. After doing that, then you can look at the pullback of the rational sections, and then they will give you the so-called elliptic stable envelope defined by Aganajic and Okonkov, okay? And lastly is this identity between stable envelope, you can restrict to a T fixed point V, and uh, for the other side, you can look at stable envelope for X shriek, at V shriek, and then you can restrict to W shriek. Now notice that then you have this identity between the two sides, okay? But this identity is an identity up to some normalization. So in other words, you have to normalize the stable envelope by some factors, okay? So these three gives the uh, 3D mirror symmetry statement of Okonkov and Aganajic. So of course, one can notice that this W and this W shriek, V, V shriek, they are switched, okay? That's one of the properties. And also some comments about this 3D mirror symmetry statement. So it's conjectured that this X and X shriek correspond to the so-called Higgs branch and the Coulomb, Coulomb branch, okay? There are two concepts from physics and uh, I believe that Higgs branch is made, it's already, uh, constructed and is relatively easy to understand in math. It's some kind of um, hypotoric, uh, hypocalorid uh, quotient, I think. Sorry, I'm not familiar with that. And the other one, column branch, is constructed recently by um, this uh, by three mathematicians: Riemann, Fingerberg. And uh, the last one is uh, Nakajima. 
in one unit of space. So that's just some recent work. So there are a lot of things to be studied in this area. And the other thing is, uh, the other remark is that this 3D mirror symmetry is also related to um, this symplectic duality. Okay, that's also some mathematical statements of concerning um, this category O and this Kutu duality. Also, I didn't mention that the stable envelope. So um, we are going to define it later, but for now you can think of it as some rational section over this variety, okay? And uh, it's indexed by the fixed points. So give you any fixed point, you will have a, stable, uh, a rational section. That's called the stable envelope. That's the elliptic version. There's a similar version for K-theory and the cohomology that's well known, okay? So that's the second motivation that I think one should consider equivalent elliptic homology. So uh, before I continue, is there any questions? Okay. Now the third motivation that one wants to consider elliptic homology, equivalent elliptic homology comes from the study of elliptic genus. There's some work done by Borisov, Lipgober, and uh, later on it was used in this super calculus by Lumani and Weber. So basically, um, one wants to consider elliptic classes for a uh, singular variety. And then it turns out that you have to consider pairs instead of just one sing singular variety. So you have to consider pairs with a, a wheel divisor. So Borisov, Lip, uh, Lipgober, they constructed these elliptic classes for the pairs, as long as these deltas so this pair is a KLT pair, KLT links is for Kawamata log terminal pair. Okay. So then after you, if the pair satisfy this uh, KLT condition, then you can define these elliptic classes. Using, you can use resolutions and uh, they prove that this definition of these classes does not depend on the choice of this resolution. So if you want to study this construction for super variety, then there's a problem because this super variety together with boundary is not KLT. So you cannot just apply this uh, borisov lipgober construction, okay? And then it was realized by Riemann and Weber that instead of considering the boundary of this super variety, you can twist it or shift it by the line bundle determined by this uh, character, lambda, okay? And as long as this lambda is regular, this pair will be a KLD pair, which means this borisov lipgober construction can be applied, okay? So that's why in this case, you can define these classes. Of course, in this case, then you have an actual parameter coming up that is this lambda, okay? So this lambda in this case is called this dynamical parameter. Actually, uh, some people, I mean, or Konkov and uh, some people also call it a Kähler parameter. Okay. So that's the reason why the dynamical parameter comes up. Okay. So then the elliptic case, people can call it elliptic homology with uh, elliptic hack algebra or elliptic demosolistic calculator with dynamical parameters. Okay. So, and the definition of this, of course, use resolutions and the canonical resolution is this called a semi resolution that exists for any super varieties. So that's how this is defined. And because for semi resolution is constructed uh, recursively. So then this ER operator, the modulistic operators are defined. Okay, so this uh, elliptic version of DL, the modulistic operators are defined. And the, because of this Borisov Lipgober's work, such uh, the classes defined in this way does not depend on the choice of the resolution. So automatically it will tell you that this DL operators satisfy the braid relation. Okay, and of course, there's one more relation that is the, what if you take the square? 
So if you take T alpha, the square is going to be equal to one. So it behaves like a well group. Okay. Okay, any questions? Okay, so let's continue. So that's the uh, background about these uh, three reasons that I think people should consider equivalent elliptic homology. So for us, we will uh, not use the construction here. Instead, we use the periodic modules. But before that, I should say something a, a little bit about equivalent elliptic homology. So for that one, once you start with a, a point, I mean, that's the easiest case. So if you consider equivalent homology of a point, we know this is equal to the symmetric algebra of the group of characters. And you can think of elements here as functions, polynomial functions over this T's lower star tensor C, okay? So similarly, if you consider K-theory, it will be just the symmetric, uh, the group ring. And again, you can consider that as functions over this torus. So here, of course, T lower star is just a free abelian group. So this gives you a product of C star. So that's why if you take the spectrum, you will get affine space. And if you take spectrum of the K-theory, you will get the torus, okay? So that's why if you consider the uh, elliptic version, you will be looking at functions over, oh, actually, sorry, there's a typo. I should put E here. E is an elliptic, it's the elliptic curve that you fix at the beginning, okay? So, and then if you take the spectrum, you are going to get T low star tensor E, okay? This is the variety that we call it A. So it has morphic to E to the M, N is the rank of the torus, okay? So actually I put this way, but in the remaining part, I will also always consider this spectrum or this A as equivalent cohomology of a point. So in other words, from now on, if I say equivalent cohomology of a point or equivalent cohomology of a variety, I'm talking about some abelian variety. So in the point case, it's just this abelian variety. For general X, it will be a variety over this EM, okay? So that's why we define this A to be this T low star tensor E, and then the dual of this abelian variety is T upper star, the group of characters tensor with E. So the tensor is over C, okay, over the ring of integers. And uh, that's also isomorphic to the degree zero Picard group of A, okay? So that's why uh, that's why it's called the dual abelian variety. So, so I, I made another mistake. So I would just think of elliptic homology of a point as A itself, okay? And uh, so when we talk about elliptic classes, we are talking about some rational sections of uh, certain line bundles over this uh, variety. And uh, now if you consider the T fixed points, you can embed it into here. And then you have pullback of cohomology theory. The elliptic classes, you can restrict to the T fixed points V, okay? Then in this case, this becomes a product of uh, elliptic functions over the, over A. So this becomes, functions over this A, this abelian variety A. Yeah, also I should say that these elliptic classes of Riemannian weber they also correspond to the stable envelope of Arkanagic Okonkov, okay? This is stated in uh, Riemannian and Weber's original work. And I think for some cases, this identification is not written down yet, okay? Okay, so that's the setup of this equivalent elliptic homology of varieties. So there are varieties. And uh, so to continue, I would like to first review some part from uh, K-theory. That's some classical story about K-theory of Cotanian Mundo. So um, we know that this alpha and hack algebra, this is isomorphic to this uh, K-theory, equivalent K-theory of the Fiber, the Stenberg variety. So this is usually denoted by Z, Stenberg variety. 
And this work I should refer to Lustig uh, Ginsburg. There's some classical work of the two. So basically, one can identify this alpha hack algebra with this uh, case theory of alpha of the Stenberg variety, which is a singular variety. And then it acts on K theory of cotangent bundle by convolution. Okay. And of course, you can look at the T fixed points of this cotangent bundle, which will be bijective to the wild group. So then you can go back to T fixed points, K theory of T fixed points. So this is called the restriction. So then inside this alpha hack algebra, that's one special element that's called the, the metallistic operator for K theory. Usually people denote by T alpha, alpha is a simple root. So this, the presentation of this operator can be written as this fraction plus this one plus S alpha. S alpha is the wild group action, okay? And then you can let this, this is an element or a class in this uh, K theory. So it will act on the K theory of, K theory of the Cotangent bundle. And then for instance, you can take a special element, the class corresponding to the identity point, okay? So then this T alpha by definition is, it belongs to this twisted product, okay? That's the group ring of wild group. And this is the field of fractions of the K theory of a point. Of course, we know that this is basically this group ring and they add this actual parameter because of this C star action, okay? So this work I should refer to Costa and Kuma, that's some classical work uh, of course also Lustig, sorry. So T alpha, you can think of it as an element in this product of this field with this group ring and that they satisfy this quadratic relation T alpha square is equal to Q minus one T alpha plus Q. And uh, now if you, they satisfy braid relations so you can define TW. Okay, after defining TW, then you can let the TW, which comes from the affine hack algebra, you can let them act on this fixed point, sorry, this uh, this class that you fixed at the beginning. And then you get some classes indexed by the uh, by the well group. So this is the K-series stable basis for W, okay? So K-series stable basis was constructed by Molik and our Konkov and uh, of course, this K theory stable basis depends on many, uh, several parameters, depends on a chamber, polarization, and slope. So, this identity is just for one of them. You have to fix some special chamber, polarization, and slope. So, this this identity was proved by uh, my work with Chan Jian Su and Gu Fan Zhao. And also, uh, there's another story related to this that is, it's also equal to this multiplex 10 class of super cells. That's some construction coming from algebraic geometry. So that's some work of uh, Alufi, Mihasha, Sherman, and Su. And also for type A, type A flag varieties, that's also studied by Limani and Weber, uh, sorry, uh, Limani and Vachenko, sorry. And I think I should also put Tarasov. Okay. These three are for type A and then uh, Alufi, Mihashi, Sherman, and Su, they work for general super right, uh, general uh, Gima B, not just for type A. So that's the story for K theory. Okay. Is there any questions? Okay. So as I said, that's the K theory case. And uh, so basically, this is called the periodic module. Okay. And uh, for elliptic case, we can start to do elliptic case. And, uh, what we want to do is we want to mimic this action and uh, also this module and then this operator, okay? So, so far, everything I mentioned are not done by us. I mean, it's, some of them are classical and some of them are recent. So now for the elliptic version, what do we do is the following. We first start with the Pancray line bundle over this A cross A duo. So basically this Pancray line bundle will classify all the degree zero line bundles over A, okay? So, and uh, we look at some shift of P, 
more precisely, this P, uh, this L is defined to be P tensor with O of H rho, sorry, two H rho, tensor with O of uh, negative two H rho check. So here, H is an element in E that you fix at the beginning. This corresponds to the C star action. So we have fixed an H first. And uh, this rho, O of two H rho, so H rho are, Rho is an element, rho is the sum of the positive roots and then divided by two. So 2H rho is a special element in A check. And then this O of 2H rho will give you a degree zero line bundle over A. And similarly, this one will give you degree zero line bundle over this A check. So take the tensor and then tensor with P. That's the shift of this L, okay? So then we know that there are two, uh, the Y groups X on A, because A is the T lower star tensor E, so Y group X on the group of cofactors. So you have a Y group action here, which can define a Y group action on A. And similarly, you have a Y group action on A check, okay? For the second one, we call it WD. D is the initial for dynamical. So we have two Y group actions on A cross A check, and then we can define this S to be this W upper star, VD star, so D means dynamical. So VD star really acts on A check, W acts on A. So with these two actions, you can pull back this L inverse and then you can tensor with L. This defines you a line bundle and then you can take the direct sum over all the WV in capital W, okay? So of course, in case theory case, if you repeat this construction, this bundle will be isomorphic. So because over uh, C star in the case theory case, you will be talking about over this torus. And over this torus, you uh, this is affine, so you don't need to really worry about line bundles. But over A or over E, elliptic curve, that's projective variety, so you cannot just, uh, it's not affine, so you have to consider line bundles. So that's why we have this construction. So this is what we call the twisted group algebra. The elliptic version or the one with dynamical parameters. Okay. So this is a line, it's a vector bundle over in this cohomology, uh, co shift of uh, category of coherent shifts over A cross A check. So that's a typo. A cross A check. Okay. And it's also, so because of this twist, we can think of this vector bundle as a algebra object in this bi graded coherent shifts over A cross A check. So we can define a tensor product structure in this category, and then this S becomes an algebra object, okay? So this is the definition of this twisted group algebra. And of course, we can consider the quotient of A cross A check into the affine, on, into the wild group action. So then this will give us a an action of S on this L. More precisely, you have to push forward to this variety so as to get this action, okay? One other way to do that is use the tensor, um, the tensor structure over here. So that's what we call the, so this L is called the polynomial representation. It corresponds to the, if you recall before, it corresponds to the action of this alpha and hack algebra on KT cross C star of a point, okay, which is which is the group ring. Sorry, it's already here, but just this one. Okay, that's called the polynomial representation. And then in the elliptic case, the polynomial representation is really the action on this line bundle L, okay? So that's the definition of this polynomial representation. And then we can talk about the periodic module. That is this one, okay? This is to mimic the idea that for cotangent bundle, you can look at these T fixed points and that's just W. So that's why if you consider elliptic homology of these fixed points, 
you will be looking at elliptic homology of W, which is basically the log sum of a lot of copies of A, uh, structure shift of A. But if you replace the structure shift by the line bundles, it will be this one, okay? So the W here is really to indicate the degree. Uh, so this becomes, so both of them, so this becomes a object in W graded coherent shift in A cross A check. Now for the dynamic conversion, you can do similar things. You can also apply the dynamical well group action, which acts on the second component. So then this becomes an object in the coherent shift, the W graded, more precisely WD graded coherent shift of on O A cross A check. Okay. So that's the definition of this periodic module. And we have an action of this S on L, as I mentioned, L. And also we have action of S on M and action of S on MD. So the D will serve as the equivalent elliptic homology of T star G over B. Well, you have to replace G and D by the Langlands dual, okay? Because the rows of the torus and the dual torus, I mean the torus and the, the Langlands dual torus, they are switched, okay? So that's the definition of this MD, the periodic module for the London dual, and that's the periodic module for the loose system. And then with that, we can start to define this um, the modulistic operator in elliptic case. So for so that- John Long, sorry to interrupt. So we usually take a few minutes break in the middle of the seminar. I don't know if this is a good time to have a little break, three or four yeah, minutes. Yeah, actually it is. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Okay, so then we'll